There are many reasons why people sleep in church. Now, some are better reasons than others, but I'll give you a few, and you can be the judge. So, people sleep in church because, number one, they're tired after working all week. Number two, they stayed up too late the night before. That happens a lot. Number three, they know more than the preacher does. Eh, fair enough. <laughs> number four, the chairs or the pews, whatever, are too comfortable, right? Number five, it's too stuffy or too warm in the building. And number six, I know it's boring and there's nothing else to do. Or number seven, they trust the preacher not to say anything interesting. Could happen. Well, there are also some good reasons why people cannot sleep in church. And again, I'll give you a few. And again, you have to decide which reasons are better than others. So, People can't sleep in church because, number one, they have insomnia, and, well, they can't even sleep at home, so you might as well go to church. Number two, their morning coffee was too strong. So I say, stop going to Starbucks before church. I mean, we have plenty here, and it's not too strong. Anyway, kind of sounds like I've had too much coffee. <laughs> number three, they have a child crawling all over them, good reason. Number four, they're too busy thinking of what they're going to do for a meal, for lunch, or tonight, or company on Tuesday, or there's a test tomorrow, or a job that has to be done. Well, you get the idea. Number five, the pews or the chairs are too uncomfortable, hard to sleep. Number six, it's colder than they thought it would be. All good reason. Well, maybe. <laughs> for and against sleeping in church. But let me tell you a good reason not to sleep from the preacher's viewpoint. You see, every pastor has heard the classic description of a preacher's job. The pastor's job is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Now, even though that description has become somewhat hackneyed over the years, well, it still has a kernel of truth in it, don't you think? Now, the first of these two functions is always the more popular and well-received. I mean, who can argue with a mission of mercy? and compassion. <laughs> now the second function is a little more controversial for certainly no one who is comfortable likes to be disturbed or afflicted. Oh, we don't mind being disturbed if there's a true emergency like fire! <laughs> Yell that in church. But we don't like false alarms. I mean often we're not sure if the danger is real or just imagined and we don't like to be afflicted needlessly. Well, this Sunday I'll be doing both. Offering words of comfort to the afflicted, which really is most of us, but also afflicting th those of us who are comfortable, which is also most of us. <laughs> but I'll let you in on a little secret. It's not just my job to offer words of comfort to the afflicted. It's your job too. And it's also your job as the church to watch and warn our people of wrongdoing, false gods, dangerous tendencies, and outright disobedience. <laughs> if you think that sounds like a big order, it is. So, with all of that going on, that's why I can't sleep in church. And I hope you can't either. So, join me Sunday in church and sleep if you want to. But nah... I don't think you will. See you Sunday.